Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, creators, and disruptors who are changing the way that business happens. My name is Tyler Kelly. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show. And this week, we are continuing our top 20 countdown of all time. And today, we have two episodes to share with you, starting with number seven, Ben Mises, CEO and co-founder of Clever Real Estate. And in this clip, he talks about what it means to be an entrepreneur and build a business. Check it out. So for people out there that, you know, they're like, I have a pretty good idea. I could do something crazy like this. Like what, what would you, you know, most people want to get paid, but in reality, if you're going to be a startup and do what you need to do, like you need to do it when you can outside of normal working hours. Is that kind of what your advice would be for somebody getting started? Yeah. And I think there's this, this big kind of myth that you need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of venture capital. You need to build this whole product. And I would argue it's exactly the opposite. We spent $99 for a subscription to a landing page service. I built it myself and we spent $30 on marketing. And you should be thinking about how little money can you spend to prove your idea and keep proving it out in stages with as little as you can. And only once you've seen people want this, I'm struggling to keep up with demand, then spend the resources and spend the time to improve it. But you don't want to spend that first. And that, I love that advice, Ben, because what you're saying is prove the concept before you actually build the software. Yeah, and unfortunately, my first company, I, I made the opposite mistake. We raised $300,000 of venture capital. We built a product. We did get to 50,000 users, but ultimately, we didn't have product market fit, and we failed pretty spectacularly. And ever since then, I kind of refuse to spend a lot of money to build something if I don't know it's actually needed. As you go through that process, like how, what are some specifics on how you can test an idea you've got? Like how, do you, how do you test that to find out if it's got viability in a market? Yeah, so there's a couple different things you can do. It depends on what product you're building. But if it's a service business, even if you're building some kind of tech that automates a job for someone, if you build a landing page and get someone to sign up, you might be able to offer the product if you just do all of the work yourself. It obviously won't scale, but if you can provide that value, someone will pay you for it. And you can see, man, if I just built the software that did what I'm doing for this client, I could scale it you'd be on a much better track than thinking I should build the software and then try and sell it because you might build something no one wants and waste time and money. And it's just a very risky endeavor. So you mentioned like the landing page service that you, that you got, was that just to generate leads? Like just to get like a call to action for more information or? or? Yeah, we were doing it for this company for clever. We would just get their information and then we would explain them the model over the phone and do everything else just over the phone and in person. And obviously, as we've grown, we're building out a platform to take more of it online so our team isn't as involved. But at the very beginning, it was just one landing page, and then we would call you and see if it was a good fit and do everything over the phone. So what are some of the challenges you face just as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, as a co-founder, like from that initial early stage to now, outside of financing and funding, obviously, but like just day-to-day -day people, business, market challenges that you face? I think the hardest thing about running any company is getting good people to join you, join you on your mission. And it does come back a bit to financing. We haven't raised as much money as some competitors, so we can't offer the huge salaries to get really the best people. So you have to convince someone really why you want to join the cause, come with me on this mission to make a change. And it's very difficult. You need people you can count on going up against massive competitors who have 100 times the money and 100 times the staffing. So your people need to be really high output. They need to be working together. And they need to be kind of on the same team working as one unit if you're going to even be able to compete with the bigger companies. How do you make that pitch to the people? I mean, I, from your bio, from your history, it sounds like you're pretty good at making that pitch to investors. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you make that pitch to potential employees? I found it's even easier to kind of get an employee on board because you'll just tell them what you're working on and it's really about selling the passion. One of the better things with Clever is not only do you get to work at a real estate startup, it's also run two of our board members are real estate investors, myself included. So we're not only giving you a great place to work to change kind of the industry, we're also teaching you how to invest in real estate, which is ultimately giving them the path to financial freedom. So it's kind of an empowering thing. 
you can leave your corporate job, do a company where you have a voice, you have a say, and at the same time, we'll teach you how to be financially free through real estate. And it's a really, really empowering value proposition. Even if we're $10,000 less than what our employees could make at a corporate job, we'll make up for it on what they teach them and the ability they'll have to make an impact. So what you're really trying to do is long-term equip people so they can avoid that situation that you had so many years ago. Yeah, I'm really big on kind of financial freedom and financial education. I think Clever is a great opportunity to give people a great place to work while also teaching them, here's real estate, here's how you can use it to reach your goals and become financially free. So you mentioned like the other guys out there with a whole lot more money than you do, that that you have. What, uh, like how do you go up against those types of, of companies, those types of apps or you know services i think the one thing that we have as startup founders is our ability to work and our ability for small teams to cut through the bureaucracy we can dream up a system we can work all night on it all day and get it built whereas the big company has meetings they have to hire countless teams they have to audit everything and we can just go for it and see if it works so it's kind of the nimbleness and the ability there's no one else that we're reporting to. There's not as much at risk, so we're really in a position where we can go for it. So we talked a little bit about, I mean, obviously like every startup founder is gonna have, you know, unless they're rolling, rolling in it, they're gonna have a funding challenge. And then we talked about like people challenges. What other like just day-to-day challenges do you like run into that people that are out there in your position may or may not have run into yet or just maybe they're in it right now they don't know how to get through it? I think one thing that no one wants to talk about when it comes to running startups is just how hard these people are working. It's the only job where you can say you're working 14 hours. I was actually having a conversation with another founder. I think it was two weeks ago. I asked him how much he worked. He said he worked 14 hours and he had to qualify that with some days I actually work 18 because he was embarrassed to tell me as a founder he only worked 14 hours. So there's a lot of stress. There's definitely uh, a lot of founders have some you know, a little bit of mental health issues. It's an incredibly stressful job, and there's not that many people you can talk to about, here's what I'm building, I'm working, you know, 18 hours a day on this. There's only a few people who can relate to that. So it can be a very lonely job in, in that sense that you feel like you have to get it done. And some of the ways to make up and compete with the bigger companies is just to outwork them. Yeah. Uh, I think we could relate just to being entrepreneurs. You know, we don't yeah. develop software, but... No one works harder than, than you do when you're at the top of the of the ladder, per se, you know? I'm sure for your agency, if you've got a client with a deliverable and the team is off work, it's it's on you to do it and hit the deadline. Totally, yeah. And that means you're up working all night and then coming to work in the morning with a smile on your face like you don't want to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, there's, there's a reward there. And sometimes, like, people see uh, how far, you know, we've come, how far you've come. Yeah. And they're like, man, I want to do what Ben's doing. But what they don't see are all those hours, all those nights, you know, all all those like failed relationships. I'm not putting that on you, but just in general, right? Like all that, all those mental health challenges. They don't see all that. They just see like where you are now. They're like, that's what I want. But it, it takes a lot to get to that point. It's a lot of sacrifice. And Unfortunately, a lot of times you put in all this work and your company still fails and you probably could have done better working in the corporate world. So you really, you have to do it because you love it, not for this dream of you want to be a startup millionaire. Because if you want to be a millionaire, you're better off taking a high paying job and investing. You have to do this because you're passionate about it. All right, that was a great interview from Ben Mises, CEO of Clever Real Estate. If you wanna watch the, the full interview, he's episode number seven. Now, coming in at number six is a very good friend of mine, Miss Miriam Dorset. I mean, she does so much in Miami, Florida. She's an author, she's a connection doctor, uh, she's an entrepreneur, and she's really out there making waves in Miami, Florida. And in this clip, she talks about how to connect with others and be present in the moment. Check it out. Hebor, you're the connection doctor Yes. at Hebor. I didn't mention that, but you're, that's your title. Mm-hmm. What in the world is a connection doctor? <laughs> <laughs> well, a connection doctor is, a, a, the reason why we go by doctors is because a doctor really, if you're not looking at it from a medical perspective, is someone who likes to solve problems, you know? 
go in there and you figure things out. And that's kind of what I do. And I go in and I try to help people connect back to things that are important to them or important to their business or their brand, their customers. Uh, we do things that help activate those types of relationships seamlessly. So our events are about connecting and the spirit of that and what it takes to create those types of experiences. Obviously, mm -hmm. like you, your heart is in bringing the community together. together. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about doing that? Well, we work with community organizations. We activate other people that are already doing that. Um, I think what I said there was, you know, my role is to go out and find people that are kind of like on fire and doing really good things and then just kind of like throw gas on, onto whatever they're doing to accelerate that. Uh, we do lots of events. I mean, it's hard to kind of just think about it because I'm on a day-to-day -day schedule kind of basis and things are rolling so it's like okay what's going on today so I can tell you tomorrow we've got yoga class uh, two cl yoga classes back to back that are different they're trap yoga and are are you be yourself yoga so those are set to different styles of music where it's inviting people that normally maybe wouldn't do yoga to say like hey you can do that um, then we also we have another type of yoga class is just your traditional. Um, we're doing like a sound therapy healing session. So that's all happening like this weekend. Um, we have a monthly like soul jam where it's using artists and bringing them together, helping them put out their music, um, mentoring them, giving them feedback. We do a tech event that is also around that's called Product Hunt Pitch and Sips. So again, giving, having people come out, tell their story, what are they working on? And then giving them that feedback and connecting other people in the room to what they're doing, helping match them up with, with people that are, could be helpful to them as they're on their journey. Um, other events that we do, we do constructive space, which is like a proactive uh, space for people to talk about things that are very important and typically would probably cause like passionate reactions of maybe anger sometimes, but instead we're, th we're talking about what are pro proactive solutions that we can actually do today to move through this process of whatever is going on. Um, so one we've done is like suicide awareness. We did another one where it was discovering your roots, so going back and figuring out your history and your family tree uh, and providing just that space for people to be proactive and constructive versus like, you know, maybe going out and rioting or lashing out. But you have to get that energy out when you're passionate about something. So, so it sounds, like, it sounds like you, I mean, with, with the concept of connection, cover a lot of ground. So not just, not just connecting people with people, but like helping people connect with themselves as well. It sounds like with a lot of the things you do. So why, why, mm -hmm. is, why is that so important to you? Uh, well, this is all related. It's you ha connecting back to yourself is important, but you know, I connecting back to everything around you is just as important as connecting back to yourself. Like, if you're really wanting to be happy, I think that is important. Like, it it's it comes and goes. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just it's all part of it. You have to 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 connect with yourself. You have to connect with others. Or at least that's what I have found to be true. And I have to be connected to the food that I eat. And I have to be connected to the world that is around me, like the trees and the ground and the sky. And I have to be connected to people that are far away from me and maybe not physically. And I have to be engaging in all forms, like as much as possible. And speaking the same language as other people is a huge part of, a part of the connection, which is where the writing kind of comes in. Of what I do. So tell me about your your book. Like what inspired you to write the book and like what's the what's the message behind the book? So the book started off with me uh, I mean I found that out when I was out with my friends. Well, okay, let me go take a step back even further. Okay. A mentor of mine made a comment to me once and said that I was, you know, too stuck on my phone. Um, and that's not the exact words, and I have the exact words written down somewhere, but it was like a sharp 
feedback for me to take. And I was like, that is awful. You know, I'm not present. He ba that's what he said. He said that I'm not present. And I'm too engaged in my phone. And so I, you know, I did started doing a few things. One of the things that I started to do was turning off notifications and stuff. And I wrote a whole blog post about it. And the other thing that I started to do was I started to notice my behavior. And one of the things that really took a lot of my attention, as you guys may have noticed, I have a, l a few Instagrams, right? As like taking the time to think of a caption for a photo that I'm going to post takes an unusual amount of time. And a lot of people in my generation, I feel like, spend uh, too much time thinking about that. When it really, I mean, you can, words are important. I'm a writer, so I truly do believe that. And you should take the time to think about it, and you have that right to see what you're gonna put out, and then that's there forever. But at the same time, I don't want it to take away from that moment that I'm in, because sometimes you take that photo and you wanna post it right away, and then it's like, oh, you know, I'm in here, what do I put, I don't know. And you're missing out on the whole experience of your life. So I started a note in my phone called captions, where I would just note down any captions during a time where I would hear something cool in a song, or I would see something written down, or I would just think of something, and I'd be like, I'll just use this caption later when I want to post. So then when I started posting my pictures, I would just go to the note, I would pull a caption, paste it in, boom. I'm done, and I'm back to my life. And then some of my friends started getting wind of it. <laughs> <laughs> and they started asking me for captions. So now I'm getting text messages when I'm out with my friends. They're sending me pictures before they post them, asking me what to caption this picture. And I'm like, okay, this has gotten out of control. <laughs> like, I don't have time to do that. Not that I don't have time, I don't want to use my time to do that. So I decided I would share the note in my iPhone with friends. But before I did that, because I'm intentional with my writing, I wanted to make sure that none of the captions were negative in nature and to only put out, you know, positive captions. Because sometimes I'll write one down that's just, you know, kind of funny or like, but I'll never really use it because it's kind of mean maybe yeah, or, yeah. or something. And so then I was like, well, let me just, I could just put this into a book because I'd been meaning to put out a book for a while. And, you know, any writer has tons of books that they just haven't finished. And I was like, let's see, what's this one about? So I put it into a Word document and it was like, 700 pages of, of captions. captions that you've had written. Yes, That's and That's hashtags. Amazing. It's it's horrifying <laughs> is what it is. It's an editor's nightmare, okay? So then I had to go through the process of deleting and organizing, which luckily I love to do. <laughs> and um, and then I just wrote small, I when I organized them, I organized into them into categories that I feel like my generation or people in general post about online, which also turned out to be things that were very meaningful to me, and kind of, I don't know what you would say, life principles of sorts. And um, so I wrote a little piece to go with that, and then I put them all in a book, so now it's available for anyone to use. You have over 300 caption options. You don't have to take any time. And then I also turned it into like an interactive art experience so you can take the book and you can spend time with people, your friends, your coworkers, your family, be present in a moment and create something really forever for you. And that's what it is. So it's an interactive art book. And I don't remember what the question was. Well, that, no, I, I feel I like that's, that's such an interesting concept too because it's almost like you could create a community of people that pick the same caption for whatever reason. There's some commonality between those people. True. That's kind of an interesting way to look at it as well yes some someone else also said that um it would be fun to like re to read the caption first and then create the photo that goes with mm. the caption which i think is fun too so I'm, i like that people are having fun with it and, and, and doing the, the captioning and the pictures and that's cool all right that was miriam at number six we're getting closer to our number one episode of all time again this is our top 20 countdown of all time innovation city you can find us at innovationcity.co or if you're listening on a podcast network be sure to subscribe rate and review share like comment engage with us we value that Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. This is where it all begins. So say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts.
This is where they die. This is where we come to.